Hello and welcome back to another episode. So I hadn't planned on making this video. Uh, it should be MOT time, but somewhere between the welding work and the car being outside and it being driven into the garage and now, the car no longer runs. It starts up okay, it runs for a few seconds and then dies every time. So this video is all about finding out why. So windy today. Now because this car is so temperamental, I'm just gonna check that it, the problem is still a problem. I'm gonna try and start it. Now, when I did, well before I did any of the welding work, I disconnected the battery. So I just need to check that there's a bit of juice in the battery to turn the engine over, because I've not charged it or anything for quite some time. 12.56 volts, so that should be fine. Connect it up. Ah. Try and start it. It might make a horrendous noise. It might not even turn over. So I don't know. Because it's just been ages. I swear to God, I had a whole video lined up of all sorts of things to do on this. I've even ordered relays and stuff for parts on the car, but it's only bloody running. My worry is that <laughs> I have no idea why it didn't work in the first place. Maybe because it's inclined, it's just not had fuel or something. I almost want it to cut out. <laughs> um, positive, it's running, which means I've just got to repair that side of the sill and it's MOT time. The downside is that I don't really have any content. <clears throat> um, okay, well, one of the things I was going to look at anyway, thinking it might be a problem, is in the boot, uh, there's a bit of a wiring loom bit and it's a known weak point apparently over the years as you open and close the boot, it can stretch the cable and cause breaks in the, the wires causing problems maybe even starting the car so that's where I was headed first I have had a quick look and it does look like they are a bit worse for wear so I'm going to repair that section anyway so this video has just changed a bit right so along this boot lid hinge um, from the wiring harness there is some wiring that comes up and into the the boot lid itself presumably to service the lights that are up here and probably some switches and whatnot as well. But when, I read online, when these um, stretch over time, they can break these, these wires, there's several wires here, and when they break, they can cause electrical gremlins and problems in the car. Now, as I look at this, there are many wires that are exposed and not covered, and at least two, three of them are, well, certainly the outer sheathing of the wire is broken, now, I've not noticed any issues with wiring up here, the lights and the stuff, but it won't be long before these break completely. So I am going to cut all of them, insert some pieces of similar gauge wire, uh, and then wrap it all back up. And hopefully that prevents any future problems. All right, so I have disconnected the battery. And I think I'm going to start by undoing as much of this as I can. So the bottom bit is pretty much all electrical tape, and then it goes into some kind of a, a plastic sheathing which probably should have run further down, which is also wrapped in more electrical tape. So I'm just gonna undo quite a bit of this. This electrical tape has seen better days. It doesn't appear to be all that sticky anymore anyway. I've pulled the wiring down here further up just to bring these wires up slightly. And I've also taken them out of this sheath in here a little bit just to give me some better access to this point here where a few of them are broken. So I'm going to cut one, say this green one, which appears broken. Well, not broken, but the sheathing's broken. Now I've got some similar, what appears to be similar gauge wire here. I'm just going to compare the wires to make sure I'm replacing it pretty much like for like. Right, found some thicker stuff. 
well, the outer sheathing is quite a bit thicker. I've only got black or red, unfortunately, but definitely uh, more similar in terms of the, the copper that's in there and the strands. So I think this will do. All right, so I'm making these three inch extension pieces, if you like, trimming the ends off. And I could just solder the ends, so if you imagine the wire on the car, I could just solder these ends together. But instead I found these online. So they've got a solder ring already in there, and then a couple of rings either side. And the idea is that your wire goes inside both ends, and then you apply heat. And then that melts the solder onto the, the wire. It also melts these red bits as well, so it forms a, a watertight seal around the, the rest of the wire. So it should be a good, a good solution, I'm hoping. It did come as part of a kit. I'll include the link in the description below, various different sizes. Let's see how we get on. I've got a cheap heat gun. I'm going to try to. Ah, oh, crap. I've got it on its lowest setting at the minute. So it does look as if the solder has melted. I'm giving it a, a fair old tug. I would say that's pretty strong to me. Actually, that is pretty strong. So I just need to do the same at the other end now. Extended. I'm going to give a tug test on each one just to make sure it's firm. I mean, I mean, it's easy enough to do. I'm hoping there's enough solder in these joints. We'll find out in a minute when we try the electrical stuff. So I'm going to pack all this away. It makes sense to leave it exposed, then test the lights. But because I like to live on the edge, I'm going to put it all away, tape it all up, and then test things. There we go, so that's all wrapped up. There is a bit of a cable tie, or a place for a cable tie just here, just like there is up here. So I'm going to throw a bit of that through there if I can. So I'm gonna reconnect the battery and just double check everything is as it should be. See if it starts still. Well, that's good. I've got a symbol on the dash to suggest that the boot is open. So I just need to check all the lights. So the high level brake light doesn't work. Uh, these brake lights work fine. Now, rather than take all this apart, which I don't want to do because it's a really neat job, I'm going to see if the, uh, there's any problem with the high level brake light because I am getting, I am getting some feedback into the, to the cabin. And, um, this light is obviously coming on. So there could be something wrong with the high level brake light. So I'm going to look into that next. So I have disconnected the battery just so there's no 
weird stuff going on. Okay, so we've got a connector with nothing on that end. Uh, and a connector with nothing on that end. So, it does look as though this goes into here. The, the colours of the wires aren't the same, but that definitely fits in there. Ah, okay. Now, one would imagine that it's disconnected for a reason, but I am going to see if that's affected anything. Does it work? That's made no difference. So, either this isn't getting power, there's no power coming through here, or there's something wrong with the brake light. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, ah, well, I'm going to take that apart, but I'm going to see if there's any power coming to this, this connector here. <laughs> right, so I've got my multimeter. I'm going to set that to volts DC. I have some crocodile clips on each lead. And on the end of the clips, I've got a couple of pieces of wire from an old resistor. And I'm going to push them in to here to see whether or not I'm getting any kind of reading. Now the battery is disconnected at the minute so I am going to go and connect that up once I'm ready. Right, so I'm going to reconnect the battery and then I'm going to stamp on the brakes and if I get a voltage reading up here then that should mean it's working. Okay now I can't see what's going on but I'm pressing the brake. I'm not pressing the brake. I'm pressing the brake. I'm not pressing the brake. Right, I've just watched that back. So there was uh, about 11 and a half volts <clears throat> coming to this, which is good. So power, this is all fine down here. Power is getting up here. There's something wrong with the, the third high level brake light. So I think I'm gonna try and take it out and have a look at it. Uh, I've read up online how these pop out and it is just a case of them popping out on the TF. There's just two clips either side and they're like a push fit. But what people tend to do is they tend to prise them out from either the left or right hand side and they can they can crack the, the plastic, which sure enough on mine, that's what's happened. So I'm gonna push through this uh, brake light wiring, push that through and try and pop it out from the inside. Mm. <laughs> That was far easier than expected. So where the wiring went in, just there, I think I'm gonna get something like an extension bar or something in there and try and try and push out the light from within. I'm really struggling here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out from the outside, just so everybody else knows what to look for or feel around for on the inside. <sighs> so I'm gonna try and use this like trim tool. It's not like a uh, plastic one or anything like that, but with a cloth and this thing, I might be able to just prise it off. clip that goes into here so in theory you could get behind this from the inside and push it out I couldn't feel it and in doing that I've snapped this end off <sighs> okie dokie right so I've got myself a sort of made up 12 volt supply and I'm going to test this now I can't get my crocodile clips into the end of this connector so I'm just going to cut the wire it's just the quickest thing for me to do. I can always resolder this. So if there's nothing wrong with this, this should be fine. So there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing. Nothing whatsoever. 
So I've got two choices. I can either try and take this apart. Well, actually I've got three choices. I can try and take this apart, figure out what electronic nonsense is going on inside here and try and fix it. I'm not going to do that. I could replace it, but they're actually quite expensive. They're sort of 40 pounds upwards. If you go to get a genuine one, it's sort of 70, 80 pounds. So I'm not going to do that. So I had a look online and I've got this LED strip, red LED strip. Uh, it came as a pack of three on a reel for five pounds. So if I connect this 12 volt supply up to this, that lights up quite nicely. So I'm wondering if I can just separate this somehow, take this back piece off, put the LEDs inside, wire it through, should be fine. Well, that's not gone to plan. I've ended up cracking it here and I've chopped a bit out of the back because I was getting frustrated with it. Anyway, in terms of MOT, I'm gonna chuck this LED strip in here, glue, 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 stick it back in the car, hope it works, done. This must be my least favorite fix. I can't even call it a fix, really. <laughs> it's been a bit of a disaster, this bit. I really should have tested it before I put that in. <laughs> ah. Connect this up. <coughs> Battery on. Test. So I have, I've got a mirror set up this time so I can see what's going on. Uh, <laughs> I've got to show you this. Just let me know, would you leave this as it is? I mean, it's kind of smiling. <laughs> Positive, it works. Negative. You can, you can see the negatives. <laughs> I'm going to leave that there for now. And, uh, yeah. Right, well that didn't go to plan, um, any of it actually, but the main thing is that there is a functioning brake light there, so it shouldn't cause any problems come MOT time. Now, the next video is gonna have something a little bit different in it, so I hope you enjoy that. Uh, and then it, I think it's MOT time, because there's only the sill down that side to do. Uh, the part is made, it just needs welding and all the rest of it. So I'm not that far away from getting this on the road. It's been a long time coming. Fingers crossed. So join me in the next one.